Greater, rest, greater Grace, Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, this, is, this is our conference, our South Florida conference. Okay? Everybody here? Everybody awake? Yeah, so we're gonna, it's gonna be a great night. It was a great, it was a great yesterday and a great morning. And it's gonna be continued that way. Alrighty. Lord, we just pray for this time, this, our church, worldwide, every member, every person that's out there sharing the gospel. And we just thank you, Lord, and just bless this church in this, this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please stand. Page 143. 143. Go on the journey here now.
You know, I got this friend. Really? Well, <laughs> I got this friend that I've known many years, and he's he's always been a, a uh, edifier. Oh. Edifier. He built me up beyond, and he really put he he really ministered to me as, in my life, and everything that I do, and gifts that God has given, me, preaching, and singing, and whatever. He's always been there, and he's an amazing man. And I like for him to come up. This is, you know, pre we just, these pastors, mm. these guys' lives, are, they're pillars. Mm -hmm. yes. The ones that I've learned from and, and, and been around, I've learned from them. And they spoiled me. They spoiled me. <laughs> they spoiled me. Yeah. And, uh, yes. So it kind of, it's hurt, hurtful because I, I have a higher standard. <laughs> I have a higher standard. It's amazing, isn't it? But, you know, for the Word of God, you need that higher standard. Because yes, yes. you've got the highest, most high God, the Word of God. Amen. Amen, yes. And, uh, and this guy is amazing. Travel with him internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's amazing. I love him. Him, his wife, his family, all of them. Pastor David Stanbowski. Amen. Yeah. Also, also known as Pastor Stampo. Oh, but he is amazing. Yeah, Hey, we are wearing the same pants again, oh, Pastor Shaller. Did you get a memo? The Jews require a sign, otherwise I wasn't getting up. Man. And white, and look at this. White, do we look the same? We're brothers. Right? White and gold? Yeah, you just yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. We are definitely brothers. Good to see you all, and um, Good evening. I didn't come to do this, but I came to fellowship with you because um, um, more than anything, uh, I thought this morning, I'm 15 hours ahead, so I don't know what time it is. We just, my wife and I just came back from New Zealand, oh, and wow. um, there are believers there. Australia, I was on the beach that Steve Finkelstein used to swim on. He was an old friend of mine, and I thought of all the people he worked with and led to the Lord. Butch Vieta was there. Um, good places to have visions for. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania. Yeah, and Antarctica is only 300 miles south of there. So if anyone <laughs> likes the cold weather, we that's why... We old Jews moved to Florida because it's much better for <laughs> our bones here. <laughs> but uh, just a, a little background, 47 years ago in March, I was in West Palm Beach. I was a Jewish businessman who had, um, his life had fallen apart in Massachusetts and Connecticut. I was searching for answers. I got off the plane and I met a blonde haired, blue eyed Mennonite girl uh, and and she said, here's the keys to my car, go find yourself. Oh, wow. I drove down US Route 1 to Boca Raton. I pulled into a parking lot uh, of a church. I had never been in a church before. Went in the church and I sat there weeping. And um, the guy was a Jewish pastor who sat next to me and told me what was going on in my life. And ever since then, that's 47, I married the girl obviously, 45 <laughs> years of of uh, oh. hanging with her, she's hang, putting up with me. And uh, <laughs> remarkable, remarkable story. That's nothing, because right? each one of you have a story. And, the, and you know what's so important about body life is that we can share our stories. That's how iron sharpens iron. It's not, it's not a contest to see who knows more, it's a contest to see uh, just let God love us more. And, um, and then last year, this week, I went for an ulnar nerve surgery in, in Sarasota, and I went to my doctor and he said, wait, let's do a stress test. 
They did a stress test and uh, two days later, they had opened up my chest and I had five clogged arteries oh, wow. and I had no, no blood coming through my aortic valve. And he said, you were a walking dead man. How is it you're even alive? Oh, wow. And my surgeon, first time ever, he just walked in the room with Karen and I. He said, can we hold hands and pray? Oh, wow. And we're, I mean, I'm from Massachusetts. <laughs> Doctors don't do that in, Mass <laughs> in Boston. They don't pray. But uh, he prayed with me and he said, Lord, use this for your glory and thank you for allowing me to open this man up and, and to fix his body. And um, a year later, I got the green light to travel and to be myself again. You know, I wasn't, it's just, God is so good to all of us. You, each one of us has a story that's told and, and don't, lose, don't lose that for anything because this world needs to hear it. And, and and we never get tired of it. No. I was with believers from New Zealand and Australia and, and Singapore and Tasmania. I, 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 and they just marveled. You know what I said to them? One, I did a Bible study with about 30 of them. I said, just let God love you. And some lady starts crying in the middle of the Bible study. She goes, where'd you hear that? I said, my pastor taught me that. No. Just let, it's so simple. But I never even thought of that. I've been a believer for 60 years. <laughs> Just let God, you know, and his love doesn't demand you change, but produces a change in you. You remember that? Yes. And so what we have is such authority in the scriptures that keeps us humble and broken. And we got that because there was a price paid throughout the history of this ministry. I have noticed around the world there are many other ministries who do the same. I'm just thankful to be in this one. You can only be born in one hospital. You can only, you know die in one cemetery you can't spread your uh, you could spread your ashes but forget that so anyways turn to psalm 62 in a few moments it's just uh, wonderful to be with all of you and those who i know and those who i i, I will get to know or, um, life is good my wife and i spend a lot of time in sarasota i have um, done i'm teaching a hebrew class every monday night with a group of people I don't even know how they even got together and I'm at somebody's house I met him in the gym so we've got about 20 people coming out I'm doing a Monday night uh, Hebrew teaching class and then there's a couple of Amish guys who live down the street from us who are coming back this year and they want to learn the scriptures so you don't retire no, I'm just, I, I, I have too much energy now my doctor says I have the transmission of a 30 year old so why are you and he said he said you know naps don't take naps anymore. I said, what? I love my nap. He said, he said, yeah, people have this idea that they need naps, but when you have, you know, new, new arteries going through and your blood's flowing, you can take a siesta once in a while, but knock it off, read or do something, go out and share the gospel instead of taking a nap. So he said, I don't recommend that for some of you older guys who are older than me, but there's not many in this room that's older than me. Uh, just Keith, I think, is the only. Other than that, there's nobody else. Romans and Yeah, love it. Love it. So Psalm 62, I thought of this. Uh, my thought this morning was we ha all have a tremendous need as believers to live in a godly capacity for the truth. I have anticipation and expectation, and that is so delightful. Here's what Psalm 62, 5 says. To God alone does my soul hope, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and salvation, my stronghold. I shall not falter. My salvation and honor is upon God, the rock of my strength. My refuge is in the Lord. Yes. Um, I thought of this idea of um, uh, why are we really here? And um, always deep thoughts in the morning because I get up, I have a new day to think about the new mercies of God. My foot almost slipped, Psalm 83 says, but his mercy held me up. And I have this remarkable under idea that God is so for me. And God is waiting to be gracious to me. And, and, and this idea that there's a prepared place for us, yes, we know that, but it's real. And, and the, the way to forget about growing older is to just let grace give you an anticipation for what God's gonna do. Yeah. I remember this illustration that I, 
when I'm playing sports, I always expect, like if I'm playing baseball, I always expect, I'm on defense, I always expect someone to hit the ball to me. That's it. That's the way I play my, my, my baseball. That's the way I live my life. I'm expecting something to come from, from God for me. And I'm never disappointed because it happens. It happens. You know, it's interesting. As I told you that I first met Karen here, she had a white triumph. This was 19, she had a 1964 white triumph. And, um, she, and she let me use it, I couldn't believe it. And, and, and I was driving it around West Palm when there was nothing like this. This was all fields and farms and everything. But um, when I was pulling in to, West Palm, to uh, uh, PGA Boulevard, in front of me was a 1968 uh, Triumph co convertible, oh, no. but it was green. So I got out at the red light, took a picture of it, and I ran back in my car. I said, I gotta give this to my wife. I said to Karen, she said, that looks exactly like it, but the guy painted it, you know, oh. and, and I had met her in that white car. Why I say that is, is I anticipated being blessed by God in many ways, but not that way. Yeah. That was God, that's a God moment. And there are more God moments. I'm on a cruise ship with Micah and Ava and Karen, and we're looking out on the beautiful ocean, and we can, and it's the Indian Ocean on the south of Australia, and and I'm looking out, and there I hear the captain say, "Bible study in the chapel. Anyone who wants to come, please come." I said, "Bible on the love boat? There's a Bible study?" <laughs> and here we. I said, Karen, I gotta go. I went to the Bible study, one thing led to another, and God bless. There was a pastor from Las Vegas there, there was pastors from Tanzania there, there was pastors uh, from Australia, New Zealand, Singapore. There were people from all over the world in this Bible study, and I got to be there for the whole week of the cruise and minister to people. What a remarkable God we have, amen? amen. You amen. all have that testimony. Your life is a tale that is told. It's about to be told even more as you stand in awe of God. Amen. You know, it will be, just, just let God not only love you, but speak through you. And even in the moments when you don't have a word, you stutter and mumble like Moses. Well, what are you gonna do? He did, he accomplished okay. He did okay, didn't he, that boy? He sure did. But as we close, I want you to think about having an anticipation because it's so key. I have a fixed heart, Psalm 57, verse 7, in more ways than one. It's steadfast heart. It's, uh, I remember those definitions. I have a, uh, a firm heart, a heart of flesh that God's able to use and, and take away the heart of stone. Uh, each one of us, we have new hearts. You know, this salvation is so great that we can't even, it takes a lifetime to just try to figure out what, what in the world was God thinking when he saved us? He reached down, really? grabbed us, grabbed a hold of us. Mm -hmm. Not only did he do that, but he gave us a prepared place here on earth as he prepares a place for us in heaven. Amen. Last thought. The measure of, how, well, two thoughts, one thought. You remember Carly Simon, anticipation, <laughs> you know, with the bottle of Heinz ketchup? You remember that? <laughs> I'm that old, I remember that commercial. And they would put the ketchup upside down. It was the first ketchup that, 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 that really came to our attention because it went down so slowly. Yes. You remember? So she sang a song called Anticipation. By the way, uh, 10 Tomatoes That Changed the World. I read it on the ship. I recommend it. 10 Tomatoes That Changed the World. Get it and compliment your life with it. It's, it's remarkable. It will cause you to go out and share the gospel. It's not a gospel book. But it's, um, I read it on the ship, so enjoy it. Anyways, how that, anticipation. How we anticipate God is like the ketchup coming out of, you know, sometimes we shake it, um, sometimes we just squeeze it harder, sometimes we just let it drip if we're patient, you know. But the expectation and anticipation we have as believers uh, will always determine the amount of concentration we have on what God's doing in our lives. Yes. And I think, I think we can leave with that because um, I remember that, you remember, um, who's the guy that wrote the translation of the Bible, Peterson? Uh, Eugene Peterson? Eugene, he passed out, he went home to be with yeah. the Lord. But years ago, 20 or 30 years ago, he wrote a book about long obedience 
Remember that book? Yeah. Yeah, and, and he quoted uh, Nietzsche in it, and he said this, the essential thing in heaven and earth is that there should be long obedience in the same direction. There, there thereby results and always resulted in the long run something which has made life worth living. The long run. We don't know if we have tomorrow. We're not boasting. We don't know God's plan for life or death for us, but we have eternal life. Amen. But we do know this, that he that hath the Son hath life. Yes. Yes. And that's a gift that God has given each and every one of us. You're not here by coincidence. You're here by divine appointment. And God, he that hath the Son hath life. And God has given us an opportunity to live that life. I remember early on in Hartford, Connecticut with Felix and those days when, when he would run out of church because he didn't like what he heard and we had to chase him <laughs> and come back and look at him now. Ah, Amen. Those, yeah. ah, oh, and then Felix became a prison chaplain under me. He, he, I mean, he, he came into the prison where I was working and he was ministering to hundreds of inmates weekly, weekly in, in his life. You didn't know that about him. And, and um, incredible testimony. Same with Pastor Carl and, and Lou and, and so many strands and strings that connect us. Anticipate God. Just get that ketchup bottle out and just turn it upside down. Salvation turns your life upside down because it's not what you're doing that matters. It's what God's doing in you. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for these words. And we thank you. We praise you. And uh, we thank you for Florida. So strategic a place. Uh, we think of the history of the ministry here, but we think of the future of the ministry here as well. Here we are tonight, and we think of these pastors who are strategically placed throughout the state and how, how a thousand people a week are moving to the state and um, settling their families here and how, what an open mission field it is from all over the world. And so we ask that you would bless the rest of this night. Give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See, he was, he was prepared. He was prepared. I, I remember when we used to do stuff, concerts and stuff, and, yeah. and you would all, he would, when I was in his area, he'd always be there, and I always want him to preach. And he would, I wasn't prepared. And then he would say, no, you're doing it. Isn't that amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So he, he showed me how to be prepared. Because he, he just threw, threw the pitch at me. Isn't that right, Pastor Sambo? You would say, no, I came to hear you. You see, so I wasn't prepared, so I fumbled the ball, right? And so now, but because of you, I became prepared to be able to share whatever it, it would be. You know, that because of that, and you know, because of that uh, initiation. So look, get, be ready, be ready. And uh, God- Nobody will, loves like the body of Christ. No, no. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I didn't say that. You had Pastor to. Shaw, is that okay? Yeah, Nobody please. loves. Right. You, no. can be, you can be in Auckland, New Zealand with 20 believers, they love. You go outside and go to a restaurant, it's just eat and get out of here. Pay your bill. But in this body of Christ, I don't know you, but I love you. How is that? That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Right? Who are we? Yes. What, what is man that we've got as mindful? I'm sorry for shouting out that I'm Jewish. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there he is. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, hey, hey, you know when, you, when you pitched that book, when you pitched that book, I said, the tomatoes? I said, he's getting kicked back. I'm Jewish. <laughs> he's Jewish. He's Jewish. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Pastor Stankowski, uh, uh, he's amazing. Pastor, uh, Pastor Walker, I don't know how Pastor Walker's doing, but I love him too. He was a great guy. And uh, and we're so pleased that, that we have Felix here. Amen. Uh, yes. God really blessed us. Uh, 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 and his aunt and Marsha, his beautiful wife. Oh, yes, yes. Marcia. 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 Yes. So that's good. For you. But now, it's awesome. It's uh, the word of God is straight. I mean, it's straight up and good, isn't it? Yeah. It's really yes. good. And now we got uh, our Lord. Uh, Whatever his name is. Whatever his guy's name is. What's his name? We got this guy. Let me see. Oh, my wife. 
Hey, a, a little, a, a quick story. I did a funeral one time. Yeah. And, and I'm up there, and uh, I'm doing the guy. Actually, we won the guy's soul on his deathbed. Oh, wow. It's pretty amazing. But I forgot his name, and, I'm, and uh, all these people are out there, and I'm going, and... Uh, 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 <laughs> he wants you to hear this message. He wants you to hear this message. This guy that's in this box. Over here. <laughs> but anyway, I forgot his name, and it was De Debbie Moore's dad, right? And uh, and Bob was looking at me like. <laughs> and then I, I pulled up the card and I said. Billy Bob Smith. <laughs> anyway, I, I can't remember your name. God forgive me. But anyway, this uh, unknown Carrie career fashion, Thomas Shower. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I had an idea before we start, just to, if you maybe, you, does everybody know everybody in the room? Maybe not. No, let's, take, let's take a few minutes. So what you do is you stand up, you go to somebody you don't know, and then you just say, how can I pray for you? And I'm gonna pray for you this year, all year, I'll pray for you. I mean, why not, right? All right, so go.
churches, right? Do those thousand people? How many of them are looking for a church? And uh, what a good vision that is. And the Lord has, has sent you here. Do you believe that? Yes. In your life that the Lord sent you? Where, where is that? In John 21, uh, I'm sorry, John 17. Jesus said to the Father, as you have sent me, so I send them. Right? Can you imagine with the same authority that God, I would say, he said, as you have sent me, like the Father sent him, so I'm sending them. What about that? Do you feel that in your, I don't, but then I do, because the word says so. Did you hear that? What did he say? I may not feel that, but actually the Spirit says to me, it's true, you are sent into the world. How, for how long? Well, Pastor David uh, had a heart condition, and we heard him say that what he was, talk, the clock was ticking, right? He went past his time. Uh, oh. <laughs> how he was standing but the Lord sent him right uh, we are sent so that's um, also he said in John 20 when he met them verse 23 is it uh, um, well, how does it go as I the father sent me so I send you so I so so send I you yeah. you are sent all right so maybe I have like short, little, little messages, like seven minutes long, and we'll just do a few of them. All right, so um, any of you have ever, do, do you have bad habits in your life? Any of you have bad habits? How about any of you are smoking cigarettes? I want you to raise your hand. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have bad, you have secret things? Do you have bad habits? Do you have also like, like things that, that you do because you always did them? Like I remember in one of our churches, uh, people would sit in the church and go home and then get angry with their family members and be, be angry and swearing and everything. And then they, they didn't change. There wasn't any change in their life. It's in Psalm. Uh, those that worship idols, they change not, you know. You become like your idol. So your concept of God is important. Because what you think about God and what you know of God affects your life. And you change. Like you stop doing that. How about swearing? Okay, turn to your neighbor and say that, you know, it's been a long time since I've been swearing. <laughs> Billy, Billy, come on. Why do I say these things? Because we are people. 
and we just live natural and then we tack on like duct tape just kind of put it on and you you're a christian you know your christian is as deep as that duct tape is and it can be ripped off as easily as you put it on it's not in you but jesus came so that that we would have him the holy spirit and the word affecting us okay so we got that settled okay. so how does that work you know the spirit has been sent from god into your life so that your life would be different we'd actually change you know we would embrace the the spiritual we would have the right concept of god we would realize who he is and we'd be changed from glory to glory and one of the things we said last night is that we're concerned about the pulpits in america remember that the pulpits what kind of not ours i'm i'm, I'm really happy about the fellowship we have and we we want to sharpen iron sharpens iron and we want to help people find christ the way the way to for people to be changed is by salvation by the gospel by faith to hear the word of life and to learn about love and that god loves me and that god forgives me that changes us that's how it happened to you you know we we mentioned the jesus revolution movie how many of you have seen it Okay, Jesus Revolution movie. I, I saw it. I cried in it. Usually in, in, in movies, like I, number one, I don't see them usually. Number two, if my wife and I see, like she cries, and I have no idea what's going on. Why are you crying? And then in this movie, I'm crying and she's not crying. I go, why aren't you crying? But then we go out of the movie theater and there are two old people like us at the same age and I go did you get saved back then and the guy goes yeah on the plane flying here I was across the aisle from one of those guys wow. another case Jesus revolution that period of time what changed our lives it was the gospel mm -hmm. it was the teaching of the word I believe it and that's all and and the spirit comes in you and your life is, you've been made alive. All right, so let's go to Matthew 11 and read about the Trinity. How does your, your how, what happens that really, is Matthew 11 in verse 25 through to verse 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and prudent. These are the smart people, uh, gifted career people, all together organized, smart, disciplined. You've hid things from people. They don't get it. And that, that's a very common thing, we mentioned it this morning, that people don't get it, they don't understand Jesus. And then they don't understand you, and then if they look at this meeting, they wouldn't understand the meeting. They don't know why we love Pastor David so much, or why we love Pastor Keith so much, or Billy over here. Why they don't get it, they don't understand what, why we are excited, of, why Leon drives all the way down here. Mm -hmm. Where's Colleen? Okay, that's another subject. No answer. Joke. They, they don't. That that that. Why? What changed your life? Have you noticed? Maybe I'm. I'm not wanting to be political. I think this is online, but um, that that I feel sorry. The people that in our presidential election, and we could say that many are in our values, not the personalities, but the values that we're voting for. We won, and others, they lost. 
And have you noticed that there are some people that are feeling it? And, you know, the loss. Oh, yeah. Their candidate lost, you know. They're lost. And so that, that's like an opportunity for us. Yeah. So like to, and to be honest, to just recognize that there's pain and hurt yeah. and they've lost the thing they had hope for or what they were looking for and they, what, what do they have, right? But we understand them. We love them. We pray for them. We, we minister to them. We evangelize. We share a word. We want their life to be deeper, like for in well, all of us. But so Jesus is saying, Father, you didn't show it to those people. They didn't get. They don't get it. And then he could say, Father, and that group, they don't get it. You've hid it from them. You hid, you've hidden things from people. Wow. It's true. Like there are things about God that are hidden. And you might say, you know, well, I know it. It's clear to me. I got it. It's like, yeah, you got it. They don't got, they don't got it. They, they don't get it. They, they, it's not clear to them. So that's where ministry comes in. Ministry is, is an understanding that people don't get it. Because you didn't either. And I didn't get it either. We didn't know. Nobody told me. I was in Maine, okay, like in 1972. And I stumbled on this church. And but before I was there, I was uh, like uh, nine months a, say, uh, a believer in New York. And um, and when I found it, I realized it wasn't the geography wasn't the point. But I'm just trying to say, I I came out of the church. I go, everybody should know this. Wow. Everybody <laughs> should know this. Yes, it's unbelievable. When, when will they know? When will they know? How do we, how does it happen? Everybody needs to know this. This is incredible. That's literally what happened to me. And I, had, I was naive. I was like shouted from the rooftop. You know, we, we can't reach people, you know. But then I just realized, no, it's, it can't happen unless it happens, unless God reveals it to them. Let's read it, chapter 11. Verse 25, because you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. You not, now you can turn to your neighbor and say, hey, babe. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, 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 hey. What's the meaning of the word babe? It's really, really like a very young, innocent child. It's very, it's very much like not a gifted, talented, successful, mature person. It's a fisherman in Galilee who knows very little. I mean, very little. They, they said, I heard this, that one Sunday newspaper, the New York Times, is more information in that one edition of one day than that the 15th century man knew his whole life. There's more information in that one newspaper than what people knew in their whole life in the 15th century. You know? We are a world of knowledge, but where does the knowledge bring us? How, how can that knowledge change my language, and change my heart, change my footsteps, change my habits? Okay. Verse 26, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. You don't question God. That's your will. Now, this is the Son and the Father talking. Father, Son, this is the Trinity. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have a fellowship. Have you ever sat in a table with three people and you just feel connected with three people? And you've got an atmosphere and you have a fellowship and an agreement and it's in your heart. Have you sat at a table or you've been on a boat, two people on the boat, and you're just like, there you are, and you, that's your world. That's the Trinity. I mean, that's a poor illustration, but you get the idea. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit eternally, always in union and fellowship with common interest and common understanding of each other. And to think that you've been brought into that boat or into that circle, to think that God the Father has invited you in and that you have the same spirit and the same heart and the same mind, that's how our life changes. It's God that does that. And it's his desire to do this. And that's what has made our life new. That we were dead in our sin, but then he made us alive in Ephesians 2, 1. And made us sit in heavenly places. And then he equi equipped us. So let's read again here. Verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. You might say, my Father has told me everything. Except the time of my second coming. That, that the, only the Father knows, not the angels of heaven know. But, but my Father has delivered unto me everything. My, my Father loves me. He has poured himself. I have come from his heart. In John chapter 1 verse 18. I exegeted, right, God, the Father. I manifested the Father. At the Last Supper, he's saying in John 17 um, that the, the prayer in John 17 and that he manifested the name of God to the disciples. Father, I, you, I did what you, I finished the work. I did what you sent me to do. That when they touch me, they're touching God. Wow. Wow. But they, there are people that touch him but physically, but they don't touch him. You know, that in Mark 5, there are people that listen to me, but they say I am a devil. But they're in the same in the same crowd. There are people that are saying I am God, and then there are people that are very much against me and hate me. And then there are people that are absolutely in. And these people are are us, and we have to be very bold, bold and biblical to say that it's us. We've been brought into that. It's real. That God the Father has brought us into his heart, his words. Verse 27, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. And remember in Revelation chapter 19, there are four names that Jesus has. Do you know that? Maybe you, you, you haven't noticed it, but let's just flip there. I want you to see something about his names. Revelation 19. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. So that's the first, I, I just say that label is one name, Faithful and True. Faithful and True, then is righteous to do judge and make war. So the first thing we have, Faithful and True. How, how important are those words? That's a word study right there. His name is Faithful and True. Okay. Like in all right, so the next name is verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and it said, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. What's the meaning of that? 
Right? We know he's faithful and true. And then there's another name he has, but I don't know that name. So what, who knows that name? The Father. The Father knows that name. And by the way, it says the same thing about a believer, that when we go to heaven, we will have a name no one will know except us and God. Have you ever felt about that in your life personally where nobody really knows you? Yeah. Even Paul said, I don't judge myself, but one will judge me. I don't even know the motives of my own heart. I don't even know why I go to church sometimes. I go by faith, but I might be a hypocrite sometimes or I might be doing something in front of people because I care about what people say or think about me. There might be those motivations that are in our lives. Guys, we follow a program, but it's not in our hearts. Why are you a righteous person? Because I, I don't want to mess up because of people. I have a fear of people. Proverbs 29, 25. That happens to us. But then more deeply, you know, when you are tested and tried and nobody's watching, you do the will of God. Guys, yeah. it's in your heart. You love to do the will of God. Guys, yeah. it's in your heart because the Holy Spirit put it in there. In other words, there are things about us that we can't be sure about it all. So I, I, I have a name. The Lord will call me, give me a name in heaven that nobody will really know, but only him and me. And this is who I am. On the other hand, I believe in heaven, there's so much transparency that we will really know who each other are, who we really are. You know, don't you think so? That there's no pretense, no hypocrisy, no facade, no Halloween costume, you know? No fig leaves, no like funny monkey face kind of thing. We will be who we are and it'll shine through us. But it will be so deep what God knows about us in every way that we'll have a name that nobody will really know except God. And only God knows what Jesus went through. And he has a name from God that God gives him because of who he is, and he's very delighted in him, obviously. The third name is um, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And we know him by that name. And then the next one is 16. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, let's go back to Matthew 11 and finish with that. Yeah. So he says, nobody knows the Son. But the Father, he knows my name, he knows me. Neither knows any man the Father, save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Has the Son revealed God to you? Yes. 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 You can say that. Yes. yes. Say it dramatically. Yes. 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 Say it like Shakespearean. Yes. 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 Yeah. Do you, do you know? Here we know the Father. Yes. yes. Philip. Philip yes. Yes. said show us the Father. Yeah. And Jesus is like, hello. 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 You know, hello. If you have seen me, you have seen. Uh, but Philip is like a new Christian. Like he's learning. That's like us too. Like when, when the Lord gives you new life and you begin to know the Spirit and the church is the place where God said, the Spirit speaks to the church. This is where you start to listen. 
that's where you start to grow, where your life changes. You don't swear anymore. Somebody told me that yesterday, the other day. They said, yeah, they, oh, how did it go? They, at work, this woman got angry with this brother because he doesn't swear. <laughs> so she's swearing at him and like telling him, why aren't you swearing? Why don't you swear? What's wrong with you? Like swearing, you know. And he said, this woman was swears all the time. And I, he said, oh, it was Joe Zucker, I think. And he said, he, he drives a forklift, I think. And this woman is like really angry with him. And, and it's like, why? Why do I have to be, like, do what you do? Why is that a big deal, you know? Why, why do I have to swear to make you happy or something? I mean, what's going on? Uh, but people are funny. And sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but he said, she has stopped swearing. Oh, really? Yeah, he said, you know, just, I don't have any, I'm not looking for a fight, I'm not looking for, a, okay, I just don't, you know, I don't need to do that, so. What, what is my point? Uh, when you know the Father, and he affects your life, and you start to listen, you start to be re really wise. The wisdom comes into your heart, the wisdom from above. And you start to like love, you should love people. Just like us loving in this election period, you know, people that are heartbroken or disenchanted or whatever, that could be a message to us. Like help that person or talk to them or just say, Let, let's have a talk, you know. And like this is, there's something much deeper about this. It's like peace in your heart. Like we all want to have peace. Where do you find peace? It's in God. And maybe the Lord will open the heart up. It says about Lydia in Acts 16, right? The Lord opened her heart to hear what Paul was saying. Yeah. It happened in Pentecost. That Hearts were open. We have done something wrong. We have done something wrong. I remember in Jerusalem, there's a Christian bookstore there, and they have in the, under the they have like these, you know, like in the sides or whatever they have New Testaments in Hebrew, and some an Orthodox Jew may come in. They will look both ways, you know, look on the street both ways and just duck in. And they said, do you have one of those books? And they give them one of those. And, and then one, one of them, I heard the story, one came back and said, if this is true, we are in a lot of trouble. Wow. If this is true, it's shocking, right? That's, that's when my world collapses. When I, I, I am amazed, like in my heart, has that happened to you? In some way, and it's shocking. You wake up and realize that maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm in a lot of trouble. Maybe, you know. And this is an amazing thing. When, when the Father would show us the Son, and the Father, the Son would show us the Father. And we would have a new life because we're in the Trinity. We're accepted in the beloved. We're called by his name. Our name is in the book of life. We have a, we have a new heart. We have a new life. So then we have church life. And, and in our church life, we start to love and have an easy yoke. Verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And may we say, in our, just for context, in our election year, all of you, that are hurt, all of you that are disappointed, all of you that are heavy laden, all, all of us who have some broken, broken things in life, let's take our yoke upon, up, upon us. Take our yoke. Take you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you. This is an easy yoke because it's the yoke of the Trinity. You're in the family. It's the yoke of the Trinity. Can you imagine 
excuse me, being born into an amazing family. Like one time I was in Moscow and I asked the taxi driver, how's your life? And the taxi driver said, I have to live like a wolf. And I said, you mean, like, what do you mean by that? He goes, I have to live like a wolf, you know? Like, I have to fight, I have to, I have to be like an animal. I have to fight to live. And then we're driving along, he goes, how about you? And I said, well, I live like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and could you pull the car over right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do that again. Yeah, it's time stop. for me to get out. Right <laughs> That's my stop, right? And you see that, what does that mean? I live like a sheep. How do sheep survive? They have a shepherd. I, there's two of us. I'm a sheep and I have a shepherd. And which one is the strong one? The shepherd. And in your life, you, you, you are a sinner and weak, but you have the Trinity. The Father who elected you, the Son who suffered for you, the Holy Spirit that fills you. And on it can go. What has the Trinity done for you? So here's a dear man in Moscow struggling in life, and here's a dear man in, in Miami doing the same thing anywhere in the world. And to change from being a wolf being a sheep with a shepherd is what we're talking about. And you, you know, people that know, I, I got it down, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm strong. And it's like, you think you do, but you, you know, not really. You don't have it. You don't have it. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. You don't have anything. There's a proverb that says, uh, the hope of the righteous, I mean, the hope of the wicked perishes when they die. When a wicked man has all these hopes and he dies, all his hopes are gone. They die with him. But for us, when we die, they just start, they just expand more and more and more. We have more and more when we die. When we die, we are in the presence of the Trinity. When we die, we, we are in the presence of something we never saw before. And we have, and Jesus is saying, this is the yoke you want. Not the one of guilt and bad habits and frustration and emptiness, but this is the, this is what you want. So that's what we have. Let's finish here, it says, Take my, your, my yoke upon you and learn of me. So learning. Do you ever stop learning about it, Chris? What about it? What's the correct answer? Just say the correct answer. Never stop learning. No, I know. <laughs> okay, so wait a minute. Learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of me. There's the, the world of learning, and they learn everything. Amazing knowledge, increasing all the time. But do you ever learn of me? We have to make the effort to learn of Jesus. We have to make the effort to learn our Bible. We have to make the effort to trust Him. We have to make the effort to be together. We have to make the effort to learn this word. It makes us wise unto salvation. And we have to share it and become a talker and just talk more, talk more. Some of you maybe don't talk much. I don't know, well, my impression is you talk a lot. Okay, you, you have to talk, Pastor David. Remember, remember your son told a funny story, you and Seth maybe, went kayaking, I think. And so Seth said his son said to Pastor David, 
He said, Dad, we're going kayaking. Like, just don't talk to anybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to talk to him. Just, do you remember that story? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you can tell it. Yeah. Of course there was somebody to talk to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a kayak is coming, and he starts talking. Yes, that's it. And then he's talking more. I mean, past the, you know, Seth is there. Like, uh. <laughs> and, and he's, uh, okay. Why do I say? Because, guys, if you are prepared in your heart and you have some, it'll be coming out of you. Yeah. Don't worry about the evangelism. I mean, do it on purpose and share and have it, have a learn how to share your faith. Absolutely. But many Christians never share their faith, very little. And I think one of the things is that they're afraid of talking to people. They're afraid of that contact, or they're not interested, or like, leave me alone. And to be honest, sometimes we're exhausted from our day, and we don't want to talk to them. It's like me coming home from, from, you know, the church, you know, my wife is wanting to talk, and I'm like, you know, oh. <laughs> just give me a little time. I need to come back. <laughs> you know. And Pastor David said, stop taking naps. <laughs> All right, so that, that is good. That's good, though. But you're healthy. All right, so yeah, now I'm rambling, okay? Official <laughs> rambling has started. Yeah, okay. Learn of me, lastly, this is the only time Jesus described himself. He never, he didn't talk about, he didn't give a definition, but this is what he said. I am meek and I am lowly in heart. I am meek and I am lowly in heart. He's so gentle. He is so meek. He's so patient with us. Yeah. That's where we get a lot of pressure. We get a lot of pressure on us and a lot of things in relationships because people are hard. They are harsh, they are judgmental, they are hard-hearted, they are not sensitive to us. We're just on the border of collapsing and they walk into the room and they just hammer us. And they just like, I can't handle it. You know what I mean? That happens to people. But when, when Jesus is around, like there's room, there's room for me to be, I uh, fail, there's room for me to be tired, there's room for me to be confused, there's room for me, when Jesus is in the room, just, just take my yoke and learn of me, it'll, it'll inspire you, it'll help you, you will be healed, you will be encouraged, and, and he gives grace to the humble, and he builds us up and helps us in life. So, the, the, the end message is, um, what's this message about? It is, the Trinity has always had a great time. They've never gotten in an argument. They never had a rebellion. The Father never rebelled. The Son never rebelled. They never got on each other to destroy each other. They were, they always, they were always true, always perfect always infinitely together, the Trinity. And Jesus is saying that same life is in us. And it's like, like recognize it and walk in it and give room and let's be patient and let's learn of him and let's minister grace to each other. Let's be really kind to each other. And then also uh, let's be motivated in encouraging each other and helping each other in life. Like people have trouble at home, they have trouble at work, and then they have trouble at the church. Yeah. Like that can't happen. Right. They gotta be able to come into the church and sit, anticipate it like that, anticipating the ketchup come, Anti catching a shortstop, catching a ground ball. Anticipate the ball's coming to me. Anticipate life, like take it on. Guys, I, we have Jesus Christ in our life. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Okay. Yes. God bless you.
think that okay, we're going to uh, do an offering tonight. Okay, and maybe I'll do a tune or something if you want. Anybody got a request? Bible man. Bible man. Bible man. Okay. That's mine too. That's mine. But we're going to, you know, to help pay for the, everything. Mm. This is a free concert. It was free up until now. <laughs> and, and I expect Pastor Pastor Stambowski to give us the kickback from the, the tomato book. Oh. <laughs> <that's coming. Yeah. laughs> no, but we uh, we're going to do that, and we're just thankful that yes. that people come. And I know Pastor Stambo is real tired. And, and uh, yeah, Romans so eight we, we'll take Romans 8 11. Romans 8 11. Remember that. All right. So I'll do that. And as the, the, the baskets are back there, and here, put this in there, somebody. This was from the. I'll take that. So I know there, uh, yes. What's the name of the legal name for the church to write for a check? Uh, Greater Grace Palm Beach. Is that what our name? Yeah. The fellowship. Okay. So, um, Let's write Greater Grace. Okay. Yeah, Greater Grace is good. Let's write Greater Grace. Okay. All right. Um, and, uh, also, we, we got the room, we got this room. Tomorrow we're going to be here again. For the day, but we we also got the place for tomorrow night. So oh. the, the worship team is going to rehearse. But I figure since we've got the room and you want to come, we can do like a kind of mini concert. Oh. And you can get any song that you want to hear. If no, nobody shows up, I won't be hurt. But if you come, then it'd be cool too. Turn what? Turn my mic up. Turn it. Okay. Move over here. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for this offering, and bless us in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And let me do the song good. Let me start that again. I didn't know Mike was there. Walking down the city street, he goes from door to door, taking the gift of life, where it's never been before. Oh, he loves the unlovely. Jesus. 
then, then they say, these are Bible men. These guys have watched their lives. All of you, the people that are soul winners, and it, it's what it is. When they see us, they see Christ. And, they, and when we go and, and uh, we have that confidence, we say, okay. That, the song, I'll give you the, the testimony of that song. Yeah. It, it was uh, Bible Club. I go to a door and uh, we used to go every Sunday, we, it was, uh, I mean, every Saturday. We'd go to this pl place in the city and you knock on the doors and these kids, they didn't even know who their dads were, some of them. And you get them and you take them out to an alley and you teach him Bible stuff. And then I go to this one guy's door and his name was Ryan. I pick him up every Saturday. I knocked on the door and this young man came. He was maybe 20, 30 years old or something. And I said, uh, I come to get Ryan. I said, is Ryan here? He says, there ain't no Ryan here. I said, yeah, he is. I pick him up every Saturday morning. He goes, oh. So he yells up in the house. He goes, Ryan. The Bible man's here. <laughs> so, I mean, anyway, that's it. So we're gonna. What? So go ahead. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna do a rap, right? Yeah. We'll do a closing song. Let's do let's do the rap on. I don't know who you want to do. Whoever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, on the Trinity, I think that's a good theme. That, that is a good theme. Yes. The Trinity and then it, how it affects us. That'd be a good subject. Okay, we're going to do a closing song. Closing song, and then we'll get. Uh, uh, what is the closing song? Yeah, this is a good it. Trinity song. It's a Trinity song. Thank you. I would have never known. <laughs> okay. Oh. On a hill far away. What, what uh, number is that? Old Rugged Cross? You know it? No, no, no. You know. A couple of, there's a bunch of verses. You know it? Okay. There's some smarty pants out there. <laughs> 124. What is it? 124. 124. Okay. On a hill far away stood an old.
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just, just for a minute, I just, um, it might be encouraging. Um, this is a text from uh, uh, Cambodia, Pastor Ryan, and looks like a team of 10 of us can join Pastor Plunkett in Vietnam. So they're taking a bus there November 12th to the 16th. And they, um, he says, Mike Plunkett arrives this afternoon at James and Dana. We are happy that there's a spiritual harvest here, trusting God for a great time in Vietnam as 10 of us from Cambodia joined Pastor Mike and the team. And then he goes, it costs about $65 round trip for a seven hour bus ride from Phnom Penh to Saigon. Can be done $40, but the bus quality is not the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that the church in Cambodia can experience an outreach to a neighboring nation. Yeah, there are political conflicts. But I say that, um, imagine like all that's happening, I have just in a couple of hours time, I get different. I get from Ilgar in Baku and uh, Cambodia and just you know, Europe and Latin America and everything. That, I mean, what, and it's, it's not like we're so organized. It's more like we've been invited into a fellowship with God. Yeah. And our hearts, our new hearts make these things happen. And I know Pastor Jeff was a, a soldier for the U.S. and Marine. 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 Oh, 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 a Marine. Hey, <laughs> excuse me. Fifty lashes. And uh, but I I do want to ask uh, you know you all all of us to be praying for Vietnam because I really think there's, there's a time and maybe the Lord is going to. Give us a, a church there. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 So we're gonna break, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna break for what about ten minutes maybe? Sure. Okay, ten minutes we'll come back, have a wrap.